What's going on guys, Dean from Beatdown, I'm back with more Fate Grand Order. It's time to continue on with the, uh, o Oku event, comma event. Yeah, the, what is it? Tokugawa Restoration Labyrinth, Oku, whatever. God, this is fucking, God, Jesus Christ. Seven parts, if I take into account the interlude. Fuck me. All right, please be mercifully short. And also, for the sake of labeling the video, I'm not gonna break these apart being like, the audience, part one, the audience, part two, et cetera, et cetera. I'm just gonna record them all, and I'm gonna cut it up from there. Like how I used to do with like, um, like Camelot, when uh, when it would be like, ah, oh, section one of three, section four of five, and I'd be like, well, I've got more than those sections, so let's see how many there actually are. <laughs> all right, so, the audience, part one. Uh, let's hope I have the vocal breath to uh, make it through this. It's too much Sakura talking, not enough someone else to interject. This is the place? Oh my, the door just locked itself behind us. Looks like they have no intention of letting us leave. Fine by me. Let's keep on moving then. This may be moot at this point, but is it really okay for me to be here? Please don't call attention to that. I'm trying my hardest not to think about it. Of course it's against the rules for men to enter the Ooku, but those are bound to change with the times. Besides, there are clearly more important things to worry about right now. Fair enough. In fact, now that I really think about it, this hallway is just like the... Oh, shit. The Osuruk. Yeah, that place. We were just in. The sliding doors, the walls, the ceiling, the flooring, the decorative transom. None of it is like, none of it is like the Ooku I know. Not one bit. And if this isn't the real Ooku, which it certainly isn't, then I don't have to worry about the rules. In fact, I'll be damned if I do. So there we go. So, this is the Ooku. Of course, being a woman of the cloth as I am, I have never seen such a place before, let alone entered one. But I never expected such lurid lighting and intimate quarters. All I can practically feel the dark passion here crowding out the very air itself. In fact, I can't help but notice something sweet rolling about in these walls, so thick it all but chokes me. But I suppose that is hardly a surprise. The Oku is a... Cloisted? Clo cloistered? Palace where the press of warm bodies and passion can be felt at all hours, is it not? Oh no, no, don't worry. I am not here to condemn such things. It is, after all, necessary for the survival of the species. Yeah, of course you would say that. To be alive is to be slaves to the desires of the flesh, you know. Uh, no, this isn't normal at all. I'm afraid you have some very, very big misconceptions about the Ooku, Lady Szechuan. The real Ooku is nothing like the dim subterranean labyrinth. Yes, it's broad and complex, but it was also clean and spacious and perfectly pleasant. It even had a garden. Besides, the Oku is reserved solely for the Shogunite's wife and concubines. Its purpose is to ensure a safe pl place in which to produce an heir to the Tokugawa family. That is why it exists. If you think the Shogun simply goes about laying his hands on any woman in the pa place who happens to catch his eye, like the harems you may have heard about in other countries. How does that... is that not what concubines are really though? You could not be further from the truth, and I'll thank you to not spread your groundless impressions further. <laughs> really? That's exactly what I thought it was like, too. I'm not... I gotta cut those two some slack, otherwise their their voices are gonna kill me back to back. Actually, I might just make Parvati's voice be 
Sakura and do something about uh, Tetsu, uh, Tetsu Bones, the voice. Uh, so she's basically Sakura, but more energetic, so I guess... No, that sounds too much like Sion. Sion sounds pretty much but the same, but honestly, I only have like five girl voices, so... Nah, I'll figure out something. Well, guess I get to think about uh think about it uh, right now. Ah, eh, fuck it. She's gonna talk a lot, and I want to get through this. So, not you two, Lady Par. Huh? It seems I need to educate you all on exactly what the Oku is, and what it stands for. Fortunately, as the Shogun's wet nurse, I am responsible for his education, so I have plenty of experience teaching all manner of things. All right, all of you, have a seat. I would also be interested to hear your lecture about the Oku, Kasuga no Subon, but I think it'll have to wait. I'm picking up something ahead of you. This is not just something, it is a human. Just a simple, ordinary human signal. <clears throat> of all the possible re- Oh, what the f- of all the possible reasons that ran through my mind when I heard the commotion near the Ojo Gucci, I never expected this. This is going to be quite the hassle. Y your Lord Matsudaria, Ma Matsudaira, Matsudaira, Lord Matsudaira, Izu no Kami, Nobusuna, Jesus. Fucking Christ, the Japanese love their long-ass names. What are you doing here? Let me check the old database here. There. Matsu Daira Izu no Kami Nobusuna. One of the highest-ranked officials in general, Imitsu Shogunite, and one of the three key advisors supporting him. He was especially renowned for his vast intelligence and was called Wise Izu. I guess he must have been around during this time as well. Indeed, he is, though I do get the sense that we haven't seen each other for a long time. A long time? I've never seen you before in my life, woman. Fine then, what if I call you by your childhood name, Lord Shoshiro? Choshiro? Uh, I don't know. Even if I do look different now, I can't believe you would forget about the woman who raised you. It's me, Fuku. Uh, Kasuga no Subon. <laughs> Hard as it is to believe, seeing your piercing eyes and the way you conduct yourself, it does seem that you could only be Lady Kasuga. Yet another strange occurrence. If anything's strange around here, it's you. What are you doing here? And why do I get the feeling you look much younger than you're supposed to be supposed to? Huh. Let's just say that I have my lord. I what the fuck? I have my lord to thank for my new youth. Now what are you doing here? I thought you were supposed to be bedridden. Never mind me. Who is this lord you're serving? If your answer is anything besides the shogun, Lord Yamitsu, <laughs> he is not dead, but he is no longer here either. I could not serve him any more, even if I wished to. Thus I now serve none but the lord of the new Oku, here in this Edo castle. Your services are no longer needed, Lady Kasuga. You... You're one of Lord Iemetsu's most trusted advisors. How could you be so shameless as to turn your back on him? I know I raised you better than that. You speak nonsense, Lady Kasuga. How can I serve a lord who is no longer here? So... this new guy. <laughs> that Tokugawa? <laughs> At any rate, you must all be given a proper welcome. But that is a job for the attendants, not myself. Somebody, come here. So there are more of those things? Oh, a proper welcome. Does this mean they're going to dance for us? 
these look like they're going to be much more aggressive than those last guards. Please get back, Subone. Phew. I'm glad that's over with. I can confirm there are no more hostiles nearby, but I'm afraid. It seems that man from before is gone as well. Lord Nobusuna. You were never the most sociable person, but I'm certain you cared for the Shogun just as much as I did. You are his loyal retainer. Why would you do this? At least we know that whoever is behind this is working with people like that. As a high-ranking Shogunite official, second only to the Shogun himself, he must know all about Edo Castle. And if he's working with who's ever behind this, maybe he knows where Director Gordolf and the others are too. I hope we can get some information out of him the next time we see him. Either way, we will need to keep making our way through this labyrinth if we want answers. Vane, this is where the real dungeon crawl begins. I know it looks impossible to navigate, but given that someone must have built it, I would be very surprised if there were not some way to determine the correct route. It could just be some kind of... Oh, what the fuck is that word? Idiosyncrat... Inio... Idiosyncrasy... On the part of its creator during the building process, or it could be something they did intentionally. Whichever it is, I want you to keep a close eye on your surroundings so you do not miss it. Oh, thank God, they are mercifully short. All right, part two. Earlier. Ha! Uh -uh. What? What the? What is this place? I could have sworn I was just alone in my room. Enjoying my weekly ham and sausage feast away from the others. To say nothing of that little animal's prying nose. What's going on? Am I sleepwalking? Is that what this is? Maybe I should have taken Da Vinci's advice and gone in for a regular checkup after all. At any rate, I'm the head of Kielda. The mental support pillar holding up the entire organization by myself. I can't let my staff relax their focus now. Not when we're in the middle of a war. I need to head back to my, still under construction, director's office to make sure we all get out of this alive. All that aside, where am I anyway? Is this the way out? <sighs> what? Who are you lot? S stay back. I said stay back, damn it. So that's how it's going to be, is it? Very well, I have my scrolls and my mystic code. I can fight back handedly. Take this, perplexing golf punch. Golf punch. <laughs> Bewildering golf punch. Intimidating golf punch. Well, at least he can certainly handle himself. <laughs> Pitiful! They're all far too weak. Perhaps I'm just too strong. All that aside, even I can't quite believe I took care of this many enemies so quickly. I suppose I must have grown more than I realized over the course of this journey. Heh. <laughs> it seems I have awakened the beast within me. I may be a particularly late bloomer, so late that I almost didn't make it in time, but nonetheless... Oh, so there's still more of you, are there? Don't you realize you're hopelessly outmatched? Oh, that can't be... Oh, no, it does magic. Never mind. I thought someone was doing something to Gordolf. I have no interest in kicking those who are down, especially when they're already a full lap behind. But if you mean to attack me, then you leave me no choice. I need to get back to the people eagerly awaiting my return. Now move aside, for I am become Death, destroyer of you. <laughs> yes, I've always wanted to say something like that.
Phew. Seeing all those puppets attack us without so much as blinking is kind of creepy, if not downright scary. Yes, it is. It was terrifying how many there were. Lucky for us, they weren't very strong. I agree. I may have lost some of my power, but I can still handle these enemies just fine. And since I have all of you helping too, I don't think we'll have any trouble making progress. We could handle a thousand of them with our hands tied behind our back. Master, may I ask a favor of you? Yo. Weak though these attendants may be, I think it would be better if we didn't destroy any more of them than necessary. I ask this simply because all things, living or otherwise, have value in the Buddha's eyes. So you think we should treat everything with respect, even if it lacks a soul? I can get behind that. Okay. <clears throat> Let's not... Let's not get carried away and go around destroying any more of them than we have to. Got it. Maybe. You have a kind heart, Lord Vane. I like that very much. Everyone should be sympathetic to those who lack power, regardless of how high they may rank. The fact that you can summon up that kind of sympathy, even in circumstances as tense as these, speaks volumes for your inner strength of character, I see that you are not merely repeating what you've heard, but truly believe what you say. Yes, I'm very impressed. There's a good boy, Pat Pat. Is she treating Master like a child? This is kind of embarrassing. Oh, I'm sorry, force of habit. Long ago, I decided that whenever I praised a child, I would do so with all my strength and that I would pat their head whenever I did so. And now it's a habit that's very hard to break. I'm truly sorry if I made you uncomfortable. Sure, I don't, I don't know. I've never had my head patted, so I don't know. At any rate, thank you all for indulging such a selfish request. You really believe in mercy, don't you? I guess you really are as gentle as you look, Kiara. HA! No, it's not that. I simply sa seek salvation in accordance with my faith. Yes, after all, I feel nothing at all when we destroy these dolls. Not to mention that these attendants were clearly designed by someone for a specific purpose. I cannot let Master down in the face of such an insidious trap. Whatever the one who planned all of this is plotting, we mustn't make it easier for them. Wow, yeah, no, okay. This is just a matter of fucking, uh, destroy us. Just a matter of, qu uh, quant, uh, just quantity of parts. They're all pretty short. That one was only like eight minutes. Okay, part three. Shit, my goal of making it to the interlude, past the interlude, might not be that far fetched. Guess we'll have to see. <coughs> Are you sure about this? Why would you even ask such a boring question? Of course I'm sure. Why did you think I would say otherwise? Forgive me. I could not help but inquire, given what an unusual looking sort they were. You're quite the worrywart, aren't you, Matsuda Matsudaira? It doesn't matter what someone may be like before they enter this toku Tokugawa Ooku. Once they do, there's only one way forward for them. And I don't just mean physically. I explicitly designed it so one can only proceed by behaving in a certain way. So of course I'm not going to have second thoughts about the innermost chamber I created myself. Yes, my lady. That said, this is a little unexpected. They're not enjoying themselves as much as they're supposed to. Huh, maybe it's because that romance addled goody goody Pravardi is there with them. But that's fine. Who cares? I sure don't. Anyway, that reminds me. How are things going with the one I left in your care? 
<laughs> I'm afraid there has not yet been much progress. Hmm, is that so? Well, that's okay. Just keep at it until you're satisfied. Still, don't you think it would be faster to cut your losses, crush them, and make them a pillar already? I do not. I appreciate the suggestion, my lady, but I would like to keep trying for a while longer. They are useful as they are now. Hey, I left them in your charge for a reason. If that's what you want to do, go right ahead. Just because I think you're wasting your time on that piece of trash doesn't mean I'm not rooting for you to succeed. <laughs> in the end, that is what I am after all. Which is why I'm going to do the same thing to all of them. Pavardi may make me sick to my stomach, but I wouldn't be who I am if I didn't extend a hand to her anyway. Yes, why well, beat around the bush when there's no need to? I should go out there and greet them as soon as I can. Ominous! Yeah. Another battle over. Nice to work. They're no stronger than they were before, but it's still hard dealing with so many at a time. All the remains are literally starting to pile up. Talk about a critical hit with, the, with that last one. Did you see the way its head went flying? Very, very nice. Oh. I'm sorry to ask this, Vane, but could you give me a few minutes? Uh, sure. Is she picking up all their heads? Oh my. She appears to be gathering them together so she can pray over them. She seems more goddess-like than ever. Okay, all done. Sorry to keep you waiting. I know these are our enemies and they're nothing more than... ...automized familiars. And maybe there's no point in doing this since I know they aren't even alive. But I just couldn't live with myself if I didn't try to do something. Is that strange? You know, I give a lot of shit to the pseudo-servants, but it's stuff like this that actually kind of makes me forget that Sakura is the one in control. Because that's the biggest thing I hate about the pseudo-servants, if it isn't obvious. I hate that literally pseudo-servants just extend as a cheap workaround to basically put in OC characters from the Fate Universe into FGO. Like, there's, there's no dancing away around that. Like, look at all of them. Most of them act like the person they are in control of. Like, uh, Ishtar, for all of her talk and everything else, she's basically just Ren. She's Ren dialed up to a thousand. I don't mind Ereshkul enough because she doesn't have the soon part of, like, uh, uh, soon part that, say, Ishtar has, which makes her feel a little bit different from Ren, even though she kind of is. Uh, Reigns, God help her, there is nothing different about her. She literally even speaks about, like, uh, God, I don't even know what fucking spirit is supposed to be inside of Reigns, so that's the sad part. It speaks to her in, like, third person. All of her likes and everything are literally just Reigns' likes and dislikes. I mean, hell, her noble phantasm is her just using the, uh... The, uh, fucking golem, too. It's like, that stuff is boring. It's when you just have the servant, but you get... When you just have the character and you give them superpowers... That's not interesting. That's just... That's self-insert... Oh, that's... Well, not self-insert, but that's just OC insertion into there going, oh, this is this character. But they're totally different because they have this different origin story, and also they have these superpowers. But they are totally that character. Like, uh, what is it? Jaguar Man totally swings that way, too. Like, despite supposedly being a very proud and powerful warrior, a deadly predator, she's made mostly as a joke because it's Taiga. Of course it would be. But yeah. Uh, stuff like this kind of makes me, I kind of wish that they were fleshed out more, that they were more, I wouldn't have a problem if they were summoned into the bodies, if they didn't act like their characters. And I get that's kind of the point, is that it's 
oh, they have to share a common wavelength so that they can be someone inside the body. But for real talk, that's just fancy. That's just fancy. How do I word this? That's just a rule because the writer made it a rule. If he didn't make that a rule, it wouldn't be a thing, if that makes sense. What I'm trying to say is, basically, like, that only makes sense because they said that it makes sense. If that didn't exist, you would have no reason to basically say that they have to act like this character. We could have Ren be a to- we could have- I don't know, we could have Ren be a super shy girl like Sakura, or have Sakura be a deranged fucking sociopath. Although, to be fair, I think Kalite already did that technically, but whatever. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, also, I guess Heavensfield did that, but nah, that's a little different. She kind of, like, bounced back and forth. It was weird. Heavensfield was weird. As much as I like Heavensfield out of, like, all of them, it was weird. All the routes are weird now that I think about it. Fate Stay Night is weird. Um, but yeah, no, it's... I don't know. It's just... I still think the pseudo-servants are at least better than just, Hey, look, I'm a servant now. Because that's never explained and I hate it. Even when it is explained, because it's usually stupid. But, I digress. Oh, good. I'm relieved to hear that. I don't think it's especially strange either. But I am curious why you did it. Is it because the Buddha resides in all things living and otherwise? I suppose you could say that's part of it, but it's really much simpler than that. First of all, seeing their heads fly like that got me thinking about my son. Even if they are only dolls, the idea of letting them lie there like that just didn't sit well with me. You're talking about Ganesha, huh? I see. Apart from that, I mostly just felt like it. After all, I'm Pravarti, the goddess of beauty and benevolence. So, of course, I would pray for my enemies. Oh, though, of course, that's not to say I would do that for anyone and everyone. I'm sure you've realized as much from our battles so far, but I don't feel the need to pray for them every time. I understand the enemy would see that as... as... Uh... Is that naivety? I've never learned how to pronounce that word. I know how to pronounce naive, but not the other one. Naivete... Not naivety? Uh. And weakness. But still, when I do happen to feel a desire to be kind to them, I don't want to ignore it. And maybe that really is my naivety and weakness speaking. But even if it is, I think that's an important part of who I am. I'll never forget about how you saved me without an ulterior motive back when I was utterly helpless, Lady Parr. I'm sure you did so because you weren't able to ignore your kind nature either. I can't tell you how grateful I am for that. Oh, uh, you're welcome. In that case, I pretty much just acted without thinking, but I guess it does boil down to that when you put it into words. You're right. I couldn't ignore my desire to help. An important part of who you are, huh? That's true. The greater a divine spirit you are, the more unavoidable that problem becomes. To be a deity is to be contain uh, multitudes, after all. Put another way, which version of you is here right now? Right. For example, Kali or Durga? Kali. Kali. Not Kali. Kali. Or Durga would never do anything like this. If they didn't crush the doll's heads and remains beneath their feet, they'd probably wear their remains as trophies. Man, fucking Indian mythology is crazy. <laughs> Kali, the god of fury, and Durga, the god of war. I remember someone once told me that they're like different sides of you. Eh, uh, depends on interpretation. I think they also said your spirit origins may be different, but you all share the same divine core? I ain't even gonna get started on that, because I sure as fuck don't understand it. I see, so the fact that you're like this is specifically because you aren't in their spirit origins right now. As you know, I'm manifesting right now via the innate goodness in this girl. 
I'm used against my avatar. That goodness also repels any disposition that can't acclimate to it. So right now, I really am just Pravarti and nothing more. Well, there might still be, um, what's the expression for this sort of thing? The yin and the yang? The yang and the yin? Either way, there might still be a tiny drop of that in me. But it's so small that I couldn't worry about it even if I wanted to. Uh, does that disposition make it hard for you to fight? That's true. Or at least it usually would. But I think the important thing is that I'm still here despite that. God, I just realized basically Sakura's voice is just Mash's. Or at least how Mash used to talk, I think. But now I've just made Mash higher and more energetic sounding. I don't know. I don't remember how voices sound anymore. They all blend together. God, I hate voices. Uh... <laughs> Yo, if you want to hook up, if you want to hook up and be a voice actress for my game, I will promise you no pay and very little exposure. Call me. I won't actually, don't, don't, don't actually try to like audition or anything. I won't. <clears throat> but I think the important thing is that I'm still here despite that. I read that already. And I think the fact I'm here, even though I'm not well-suited for fighting, that I'm here even though I had to borrow part of my husband's power to manifest, I can't help but feel like that means something. There's some sort of reason why I need to be here, rather than Durga or Kali. It's significant somehow. Or at least, that's how it feels to me. I'm afraid there isn't much else I can say beyond that at this point. Of course, I'm sure you would have all preferred I manifested with a side that was a little better at fighting. I know it would make things at least a little easier for all of you if I had, so I am sorry about that. Yeah, we got plenty of fighters. Whew, I might have to actually go get a drink between these ones. This one's got... This one hasn't gone on for very long, but it's like, God, I just need a drink in between all the talking. Okay, well, this one's gone on pretty decently. About 14 minutes. This is not too terribly long. But God, Pravardi's just talked forever. I thought I thought Subom was going to be the one that talked forever. I'm relieved to hear you say that. And I can promise you I'll at least do my best not to get in your... No, I have to think more positively than that. I'll do my best to be as helpful as I can. I want to be sharp and ruthless in battle, not just kind outside it. Anyway, I don't know how helpful I can be, but I promise you all I'm going to try my best. Cool. Oh, God. I need a drink. I'll be back. Hey, guys. Thanks for watching this video. If you like this video, be sure to leave it a like. And if you want to see more of my future content, be sure to hit the subscribe button. And to stay up to date with all of the releases that come out daily, be sure to click that bell. And if you're feeling a little bit generous, why not check out my Patreon page? Link is down in the description. And as always, until the next video, hasta.